no one actually agrees with the policy that we as taxpayers should be subsidizing the stock price performance of big major corporations. But that's in fact exactly what's happened. You look at the multi-trillion dollar publicly traded companies, they've become worth multiples of trillions of dollars because in part, they pay their workers like shit and they're able to pay their workers like shit because they pass off all of the external costs of supporting the workers' healthcare needs and food needs onto all of us, the taxpayers. So when you look at the multi-billionaires, know that it's your taxpayer dollars that have enabled those people to become multiple billionaires. And when you put this to people, most people of all political parties totally agree that there should be kind of a pay-as-you-go model where companies who are relying on shit wages for their workers and therefore relying on all of us to subsidize the supports that those workers need, those companies should be paying an enormous amount of extra taxes. And, you know, it's one of the areas where I think we as progressives have really um, fallen short of a powerful alliance that we can create, which is with small businesses. You know, as an entrepreneur, I talk with small business owners a lot, and they are getting screwed by big corporations because they're doing the right thing by their workers. They're providing health insurance and they're providing a living wage. And then they're paying taxes to subsidize their giant monopoly competitors who then get to use those taxpayer subsidies to get away with paying crap wages to their workers. And so, you know, one of the things that I'd really encourage us all is be a lot more proactive in embracing the, the mantle of being pro small business and anti monopoly. Yeah, we we definitely that's always something we're big proponents of. We used to do for a long time. We did small business Saturday and we would always promote different small businesses. Then COVID happened and it just got increasingly difficult to be doing it. But uh, we think that's a fundamental point of being able to nurture a collective is having small businesses and and having less centralized planning and just more. I mean, that's what we need to be supporting. Um, and, you know, I think it's really important. Thanks for doing that. Yeah. I also think it's important to note that, you know, obviously we know what Bezos has done with Amazon's business model. They are a complete monopoly over the, uh, you know, shipping and uh, shipping distribution industry. And so, you know, one of the things we also talk about with small businesses, uh, a lot of them have, you know, online stores. It's not like you wouldn't have the opportunity to, uh, And again, I know know, people are like, well, what as individuals can we do? How can we make that difference? Um, Social consciousness can go a really long way. Just, you know, we don't need one shop small business day out of the year. We need it every day. And one of the ways that that can be done is, you know, looking at where the mom and pop stores are locally and highlighting them as best that you can. Obviously, it's difficult in certain parts of the country, but I think that that's where, you know, the whole shipping industry can take a, a different turn. It's just so difficult competing with a, with a, a massive corporation like an Amazon where, you know, they're not making any profit on, on the shipping component, which is essentially what allows them to, you know, bottom out the price and, and not have any competition. But there has to be something that could be done. Um, do you have any thoughts on, you know, how we continue to further the momentum for small business in this country? Because I do think, I mean, obviously, there's a few different ideas that we have as progressives in terms of how to get ourselves out of this bad rut that we're stuck in right now. But I would like to think that advancing small business growth could definitely be one of those ways. It's just a little tricky with the way the monopolistic setup is right now with a number of these mega corporations. But what are your thoughts on how you would fight against that? I think we need big, bold government action on antitrust. I think that in the absence of antitrust action, both at the federal and state level, you know, we're, we're pushing um, a meteor up a hill. I, I, I totally agree that we should do everything we can in our own individual lives to support small businesses, but to really create the, the kind of society that, that I think we all would like to see, we have to have changes in the law. Our antitrust laws are totally outdated and don't accommodate for a lot of the risk factors that we need to incorporate into those laws as as we should update them. Specifically, the current interpretation of antitrust law only accounts for a one-dimensional consideration, which is 
does industrial concentration cause higher consumer prices? Well, of course, that's an important consideration, but that's only one of many important considerations in a democratic society. For example, we should be considering what industrial con concentration has as an effect on wages. Because if people are making a lot more and prices are a little bit higher, then people have more after, um, you know, after tax income. Second of all, we should be considering the effect on democracy. When you have companies that are the size of nation states, you create structural threats to a democratic society. And because of the industrial concentration that we've permitted to ensue in this country, we have a few dozen companies that have the power of nation states. And our politics is suffering exactly for it. Because when you combine that with Citizens United, which means that $1 equals one vote instead of one person equals one vote, you have these nation state companies that dominate our politics and write the rules that advantage them and the rest of us are screwed. Yeah. It all comes down to getting the money out, which is one. I mean, that's the first thing that has to happen. I mean, imagine a world where elected people and people in government couldn't take money like that. They couldn't take private sector money. They couldn't, they couldn't invest in private sector businesses. They had to be, you know, impartial and imagine that they couldn't run million dollar campaigns. They were allocated a certain amount of airtime and a certain amount of money if you get a certain amount of signatures and that's it. And I mean, what if you couldn't buy Congress? <laughs> I mean, that's what we're trying to do. I mean, that's ultimately what we need to do. Well, one of the things that we saw recently, Joe, that I'm sure you've been paying very close attention to, we're speaking with Joe Sandberg, entrepreneur and activist from California. Uh, this is a very important time for the labor movement you know, we were huge supporters of the Amazon workers attempting to unionize in Bessemer, Alabama. Of course, we know that they obviously went to great lengths. Let's be honest, they cheated oh, yeah. uh, the voting process. Um, but we kind of saw it as not a defeat, but as a, a momentary, uh, you know, stoppage, if you will. We knew that the momentum was going to continue. And sure enough, the Starbucks workers in Buffalo were able to successfully unionize. And it seems like it's been a touchstone moment where a lot of other, not just Starbucks chapters, but a lot of companies are, are now recognizing that people are starting to come together and collectively bargain amongst themselves and then to figure out a way that they could ultimately uh, unionize. And that is something that I think will have a major impact on us being able to implement a living wage. How do you feel about that? one of the biggest things that we can do to create a better future is to empower the union movement. And when we look back, I think one of the biggest things that has caused the exaggeration of inequality is the assault on unionization in this country. It, it's really not any more complicated than a power imbalance. Inequality is about a power imbalance. And for 60 years, the power of workers, which is synonymous with the ability to unionize, has come under systematic assault by our court system which has been populated by conservative jurists that the conservative movement has filled in the courts for many, many decades. And one of the things that excites me about the present, there's a lot of stuff around us that give us cause for concern, but we are in an emerging worker moment and you're seeing the increase of strikes. You're seeing uh, more calls for unionization in particular companies. What, what though, Worries me though, is that we're gonna hit some bottlenecks with the laws and the court system because the courts have been so stacked against us. So, you know, I just prepare us all that we need to be ready to fight and organize triply hard because we might not realize what we're about to come up against in the courts and how they've been stacked by conservative jurists who are anti-worker. Thanks for watching. If you wanna support our mission to transform politics into service, Please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.